Hey, what's going on, everybody? Checking us out from GWA Game World Antics and also the spawning point. Uh, my name is Jarrell, aka Silent D, and I want to say thank you guys for joining me today on this very special occasion. So, what I'm actually going to do is actually my first time doing this, so hopefully, I'll be very informative to you all watching this video. It is going to be a gadget review of something that I've been dying to get my hands on and I actually have used this for a while and I will give you my full interpretation of this gadget that I got. So before we get into this, let's go ahead and reminisce for a second. We all remember flip phones back in the day, right? The clamshell designs, you flip it open to answer or have you got a set back then and then you close it to just hang up on someone you don't want to talk to no more. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's a nostalgic feeling. But um, I can give you some great examples of phones that I've had and people uh, know these phones very well. But I'm not sure if you guys remember this phone. Some of you may, some of you don't. But not only was this my first flip phone, this was also my first color screen phone. It was the Motorola V180 that ran on Singular back in the day before it got rebranded AT&T. And also, uh, oh, actually, I had this phone back in middle school. Now, transitioning from middle school to high school, I had that phone for years, and it was a great phone to me. Despite the fact of my clumsiness and I'm broken in half, or spilled soda on it, um, I had the Motorola V3 Razor, and everybody had that phone. It was also on Singular back in the day, too. And it wasn't just singular too, it was all networks back then, like T-Mobile, Sprint, uh, Verizon, Alltel before they got bought out. And um, there was a perfect way to tell which um, Motorola somebody had. Two um, aspects you gotta look at is the camera protrusion, whether it was flesh mounted or sticking out. It was flesh mounted, it didn't stick out at all, you had a GSM version like on Singular, now AT&T, or T-Mobile. And if you had a CDMA version like Sprint, Alltel, and Verizon, well, Alltel's no longer here, so, um, then it would be sticking out. And also, you have to look at the keypads as well, because um, same thing like the camera, it would be laid out different. This is, this is so nostalgic for me, you guys, because I love having a flip phone. And speaking of which, the nostalgia continues. What I'm going to do a review on is something called the Freetail Musashi. Now, who is Freetail? Freetail is a Japanese phone company that offers unlocked phones to work on any GSM network. I'm not sure about CDMAs. So, uh, we have to keep a lookout for that. Someone may know, someone may not know. I mean, you know what I mean. But yeah, they offer unlocked phones in 20 different countries right as of now including right here in the US so link in the description uh, it'll take you to the US version of Freetail's links and they already have two phones out right here in this country so if you're interested go ahead and get some from Freetail now the Freetail Musashi is an Android flip phone let me tell you that and this thing just looked all types of oh so sexy yes I said oh so sexy not just sexy oh so sexy that it had to be mine I had to get it and I did for a great price off of eBay yes third-party sellers none of us are strangers to that and um, we're gonna go ahead and get into this review now let's get into a bit of a backstory about where the name Musashi came from and how this reflects Retail's naming of this particular cell phone. Musashi is not just a Japanese a figure of any regularity. His full name is, well, no, not full name, but first name, last name. First name is Miyamoto, last name Musashi. So Miyamoto Musashi. He was a very well-known samurai from Japan who was known for his very unique double-sorted style. So that's where Freetail named the cell phone from because of the classic flip phone technology and also the two touch screens it has. External display, 
Yes, on the front, you can use that. And then it, the internal display for when you open it. Yes, both of them are touch screen. So yeah, that's a bit of a backstory. Oh, also, let me throw this out. The guy was such a beast. He had like 60 or over 60 consecutive wins. I forgot what it said, but you guys look up Miyamoto Musashi and you'll see um, a lot of the info that someone has articulated better than I can right now on this video. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review right now, okay? All right, everybody, here we are with the Free Time Musashi itself, or at least still in its box form for when I first got it. So I ordered this in November 2016, two weeks before Thanksgiving, and it arrived three weeks later, of course, since this was coming from overseas in Japan. So like around the first week of December to the second week, I want to say in the middle of that, so like around December the 6th to the 11th, somewhere around that time. I had to run back and forth to USPS because there wasn't an authorization to leave international mail at my house. So that was kind of fun. Um, let's go ahead and open this box. And as we open this, we see another box. And I like the way this box looks. Not just that, how it feels too. So it pretty much gives you an idea how luxurious this phone actually feels. So this says Musashi on the front. Let's take a look around the box. On the round of top, quick skim around, serial numbers. And let's look on this side right here. We're on the right side of the Musashi box. And it has two SIM card icons. And they're micro SIM cards, not nano, not regular micro. So this is a dual SIM card phone. That should give you a hint about what that is. And um, let's go to the front of the box where it says Musashi and there's a scripture under it. But first I want to point out three of these highlighted features on here. 4 inch touchscreen, 1 gigahertz quad core processor, and LTE capability. Now let's look at the little scripture up here. It says a perfected form, an extension of one's arm, polished beyond just a simple tool, raised to apex of design, the spiritual successor to the ancient warrior's sword. The product that the craftsmen have bet their pride on. Well, I hope it's just their pride and nothing else. All right, so let me go ahead and open this box right quick. And look what we have here. It is the free time Musashi itself, and I have mine in black. Matter of fact, let's go look at this uh, color scheme of the box again. So black, gold, and white. There's a reason for that. Those are the three colors that the free time Musashi are available in. So of course I had to have mines in black for obvious reasons. Not gonna go there, but I think you know what I'm gonna say. So besides black, um, there's champagne gold and then there's white. So let's go ahead and put this top of the box back down right here. And we're gonna look at this free time Musashi and we're gonna get a quick skim around before we dig into this box and see what the accessories are. All right, so we put the phone aside. One thing I need to mention, there was a silk protector that was protecting this phone, but I don't have that piece anymore because I think it kind of deformed due to a, a numerous amount of heat exposure. I don't know how it deformed, but it did. So so I'm not sure if that's gonna affect any of the true unboxing that I'm doing for you guys. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look deeper into this box. We're going to remove this cradle that the phone was in. Oh, and look, we actually have three pieces of paper. One is a quick start guide. The other one is a warranty. I don't know what that is, but we're not going to bother with any of those since they're in Japanese. And some of you may know Japanese. Some of you don't. And I'm the one that doesn't know. So, yeah, we're just going to put these aside and we're going to open this door. And we have four pieces of accessories. So let's go ahead and start off with this one. So this right here is a 1.5 amp charging block. I never use that actually since I have two amps around my house. And this one right here is the charging cable and data cable, micro USB to USB 2.0. And this right here is a very interesting piece. This right here is a 3.5 millimeter to micro USB. So basically this is your regular headphone jack for when you want to listen to your music regularly without using Bluetooth headphones of any sort. And this can get kind of annoying if you lose that piece. So um, you might want to be very careful with it. And um, 
you can't charge this or listen to music at the same time. So we're going to put that aside. And here is the main accessory that we need to look at. This is the battery of the phone. It's a removable 2000 milliamp battery. So of course, this is kind of small. This is a mid range phone after all. So we're going to put that aside and we're going to take a look at the Freetail Musashi itself. So before we power this uh, Musashi on, let's take a look around the phone. So this is the front of the phone. This is the external display, four inch touch screen. And this is the very familiar Android button layout. In the middle is the home. And this is also the Freetail logo. The play symbol, well not really a play symbol, that's your back key and the square key that is your app switcher. Now we're going to go to the right of the phone. Here's the charging port, micro USB. I actually had a battery door on it, but then that kind of broke off because it got caught on my robe. Not too happy about that, but the phone still works, so I'm good. And then underneath the charging port is the power key. To the back of the phone, we have an eight megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. And then on the bottom is the monochromatic Freetail logo. And then right under it, or next to it actually, it is the speaker grill. And then we go to the last side of the phone, which is the up and down volume rocker. So volume increase, volume decrease. Now let's go back to the back of the phone. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna pop this battery cover off. All right, so as you can see, I already have two cards inside of it. So the card on the left, that is my micro SIM card. And I think you can see the AT&T logo. That is who I'm running this phone in. This is an unlocked phone if I have not said so. So I'm, I'm saying it right now. This is an unlocked phone. Um, I know this can work with GSM networks like uh, AT&T and T-Mobile. I'm not sure about CDMA networks like Verizon and Sprint. So moving forward. And you have a second uh, SIM card slot for when you want to um, use uh two different numbers or two different networks and then to the far right where you see this card this is my micro sd card and as you can see this is 128 this phone goes up to 128 gigabytes in expandable storage that will come in handy a lot we'll get to that later why so without further ado let's go ahead and grab this battery and pop it in put this cover on all right and then what we're going to do before we turn this phone on is that we're going to open this phone and oh yes, nostalgia to the max. And this is what sucker me and I've been looking for a flip phone again with today's features and I happen to run across this. So let's take a look at what the phone looks like when it's open. So of course we have another four inch display. By the way, both of these are 800 by 480p LCD. It's not AMOLED or anything and it's not high definition. This is a standard definition. So let's go to the standard keypad right quick. We all know what the one through hashtag looks like. And then you got your call, clear, and in key. Then there's the directional pad or D-pad for short. And then you have four soft keys around the D-pad, two on each side. There's your camera key, browser key, star key and email key not text messaging email and there's actually a couple of tricks to these keys which we'll get to later in this review so let's go back to the top of the phone so above the four inch display we have the earpiece and on the left of that is the two megapixel self portrait camera and where you see both of my fingers pointing to both of these sides it has two proximity sensors and I believe one of them is probably when it senses that the phone is closed so that it can switch to the outer display. So let's go ahead and power this phone on. Now, let me go ahead and say this before I actually power this on. The way to power it on is you hold down the end key. That's the main power key that turns it on. It's not going to be the power key on the side that locks the phone unless if it's charging. Not sure why it's like that, but it is. So you gotta turn on the classic flip phone way. Without further ado, let's do that. Ooh, this is beautiful. So I'm gonna be quiet, you guys, and you guys can hear how this intro will sound. Mm-hmm. 
I know you guys thought that intro was sick, right? This fits the phone so well. All right, so we have the free time Musashi all the way on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of demonstration swipes with the phone open. And then I'm gonna close this phone and then do a bit of demonstration swipes as you see me doing right now. Let me go ahead and talk about the build of this phone. So everybody doesn't like plastic. I don't really care what the phone is made out of. Well, I like plastic because I think it's a bit more durable and won't scratch up so easily like a lot of the devices that come out with metal bodies. That's my opinion. So let's go back to the front of the phone. So not only for this outer four inch external display, for both of these four inch displays, these are both surrounded by glass. I'm not sure if it's even Gorilla Glass or Gorilla Glass 2. There's no info about that, but it is glass for the most part. Now around the external display, there's a bit of a brushed metal surface. So this does have a little bit of metal on it, or so it may seem, and there's a bit of a silver trim around it. Now pretty much around the phone, like I said, it is plastic, and not just any plastic. It's very, very high glossy plastic, so expect a lot of fingerprints to show up on it. Now let's open up the phone. So pretty much, like I said about um, both displays, both of them are surrounded by glass. Now let's take a look at this keypad right here. I think that the keypad has a bit of a vinyl feel. It feels like when you hold a record in your hand, it feels nice, it feels smooth yet rigid, but not too rigid. And I like the clickiness that it gives when I press the button. So um, I like the way this phone is built. I've seen some other reviews and some weren't very fond of the keypad, but I like the keypad myself. So very good in the building of this phone free tail. One last thing I got to throw to you guys on the physical keypad. Hold down the hashtag, goes to meeting mode or vibrate. Hold it down again, it goes back to ring. Very familiar, right? Before we get to that, I actually need to tell you about the physical measurements of the phone. We look at the phone and it's closed. It's about a half an inch thick when it's closed. So yeah. It's a bit of a thickums, which shouldn't be surprising at all, considering that this is a flip phone and it has two four inch touchscreens. So not surprising at all. And when you open it, the phone is a whopping nine to nine and a half inches. That thing is as big as my head. No, seriously, it is, as you guys can see. All right, you guys, so let's get down to business and start this review for real. So let me go ahead and start off with um, reminding you of some of the features. So you guys already know about the two four inch displays, um, 800 by 480p, not 720 or even 1080. So you got a quad core one gigahertz processor by MediaTek, and this is LTE capable. And also let's go ahead and talk about the storage. So you're gonna have one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of onboard storage, AKA your ROM. Actually, no, that's not it. It's actually gonna be half of that, which is gonna be four, considering the fact that there is some bloatware on here, but I disabled quite a few of those. And um, plus that's what they have on the phone anyway. It goes up to 128 gigabytes in micro SD storage. So, that is the part that comes in handy for when you want to move certain apps from the internal memory to the micro SD card. That'll help a lot. That's if it's able to do it on some of the applications. You guys know what I'm talking about on that for you Android users. Now let's go ahead and talk about the OS that this is running. So you guys seen that this is an Android phone considering that we all know what the home screen looks like. Um, this is running an older version of Android. This is running Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. Now this phone was actually running 5.0 out of the box, but I had an OTA update as soon as I got it out of the box, which actually let me go ahead and show you how I even got this. So you guys know how we had to do it the traditional Android way, which we had to go into our settings from our app drawer. Then we go down to about phone and then software update. Well, not on this phone because as you can see right next to the Wi-Fi hotspot, it's another kind of green icon, but it's got a bit of a bluish teal tint. 
This is wireless update. I think this is Freetail's proprietary shortcut on their phones. I'm not sure if it's just this phone, but it'll take you straight to the wireless update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and it's automatically going to check for updates. And of course, like I'm going to think it's going to say it ain't going to find nothing new. It's already up to date. And yep, there it is. It is up to date. Now, let me go ahead and say this. I'm not even sure if this phone is going to even see another update like Android Marshmallow 6.0 or even Android Nougat It's highly unlikely. But if there is an update, I hope there may be one, but I'm not thinking that there's going to be one. OK, so let's talk about the main concern on this phone, which is what this channel is about is about gaming and pretty much my experience of gaming on this phone. It is. It's decent, but at the same time, this is not the phone for you. Need I remind you that this is a quad-core one gigahertz processor. Other phones have like a octa-core. So let me go ahead and warn you gamers out there. If you guys want to play games on this phone, this is not the phone for you. I'm giving you a heads up on that right now. Now, my experience of gaming on this phone, I'm a big Wheel of Fortune fan. I like to play Wheel of Fortune free play. Um, pretty much overall performance not just for gaming but overall on this phone there can be a bit of a uh, hiccup here and there but um it's when the phone wants to do it but once the phone gets back into the groove performance can be very very decent now let me go ahead and tell you this like i said this is not the phone for you gamers who like to do heavy gaming especially on your mobile phones now a really heavy game i was trying to play on this phone would be um asphalt and I believe the newer one is 8. So Asphalt 8 didn't really do so hot on this phone. Matter of fact, the phone didn't even like it at all. When it was trying to deal with heavily 3D graphic and motion scenarios, it would just not even deal with it. The playback would be choppy to the point where it would even lag to a certain point where it would almost freeze to the point where it will freeze. So this phone does not do good on heavy gaming with 3D and motion. Now still talking about performance, there's a test that I want to do on here while also telling you about a test that I've already done. So the first test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run speed tests on this phone and it's gonna be on the AT&T network and then on my Wi-Fi. Now speaking of which, I think you guys have noticed this already this says 3g at the top of the notification bar even though this phone says that this is lte capable there's a reason for this which i neglected to look since this phone is from japan and they have a different 4g bandwidth than we do the radio in this phone doesn't play well with our 4g in the united states so that's why it's going to be stuck on 3g for the time being but as long as I can get data from my AT&T network, I have no problem with this whatsoever. I'll just be on 3G. All right, let's go into speed test. So first thing, before I even go into it, I'm gonna make sure that everything is cleared out in the background. There's no running applications. And I'm also gonna turn my Wi-Fi off since I wanna test the network out first. Okay, it found the server. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna begin test and we will see the results. All right, so that was the test on the AT&T network, at least the 3G portion of it. So now I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi back on and I'm gonna select my house network. All 
All right, we are logged into that and we're gonna hit test again. All right, so we have all just seen the results of both the network and my house Wi-Fi. And honestly, I was very surprised that um, I would actually get such speed off of my house Wi-Fi, considering the fact that there are multiple devices connected to this one router. But we have a powerful router anyway. And going back to the 3G uh, services off of AT&T, it's not really surprising this 3g like speeds but then again it was kind of satisfactory as we just saw uh let me go ahead and talk about another test that i did on this phone uh it's on tutu benchmark so pretty much this goes back to the 3d gaming which i was telling you about wheel of fortune free play and then the asphalt franchise so pretty much what i have are the results of my um on tutu benchmark and pretty much the process it went through on my phone so what I will say about this is um, when I saw that it was doing is heavily 3d and graphic um, motion test on on tutu um, it was pretty much the same way like um, asphalt and um, the heavily 3d graphic and motion scenarios that my phone would go through and it would be choppy and and it would move halfway decent that's not really surprising considering I already knew what it would probably do. Uh, you can see um, how it's barely moving to um, keep a smooth appearance. And here's the score. Now even though this score is highlighted in green, I'm not sure if it'll even make the ranking among other smartphones to be compared to. Uh, some of you may know this better than me. Leave a comment in the section of this review and let me know your thoughts about this. Okay, still talking about performance, let's talk about the battery life. So this is a 2000 milliamp battery that this phone is packing and it is removable. I still like that feature. Removable battery is a big plus for me. So I like that, thank you Freetail for that. And I actually have to say, using this little battery off of a single charge I am very surprised on how much percentage I'm still able to go home with, not to mention how much screen time I actually have. But it all depends on how I use the phone and if I use it heavily or in the middle. So let me go ahead and tell you about the talk time. Talk time is 490 minutes, that's 8 hours, and then you have 210 hours of standby time. So pretty much like I said before, um, I'm actually very surprised about how much usage I got out of this one little battery off of a single charge. But um, like I said, it all depends on how I use the phone. So I'm pretty much the type that's still a powerhouse user even though this is a mid-range phone. I like to be on my YouTube, I like to check my social media accounts, you know, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook. I like to pretty much do a lot of stuff. I like to do a little bit of gaming on my phone. So yeah, pretty much I'm still a bit of a powerhouse user, but since I watch how I use this phone, I managed to squeeze a good bit of time out of there. So like I said, it all depends on how I use the phone or how you use the phone if you even get this or if you even have this already. But what I do recommend is that you have a portable battery charger with you. Have a juice pack with you just in case if you um, drain your phone fast, which is actually what I have right now. And sometimes I don't even have to use that and pretty much at the end of the day, usually after a hard day's work, I still go home with at least 25 to close to 40% of battery. So yeah, like I said, I'm very surprised about this little battery. I like it, but it all depends on how you use the phone. Minding you that this is running on the 3G portion of my AT&T network, but that doesn't mean that the call quality isn't bad at all. Matter of fact, it's great. I have no experience of drop calls. People could hear me on my end. I can hear them on their end. 
There is no interference of um, static or distortion or anything whatsoever. Pretty much car performance was a-okay. No complaints here whatsoever. Now still talking about car performance, we're gonna go to the physical keypad right quick. And yes, you can dial directly from the home screen without having to open up the phone app to get on the dialing pad. It'll get to the dialing screen for you automatically when you press any number. Now, I will give you a heads up about this. It can sometimes take a couple of seconds for the dialing screen to open up when you press the physical keypad buttons. So just be careful of that. If you're still dialing your numbers, it won't get all of it when it's still opening it up. Okay, you guys, so let's go up to the directional pad or D-pad for a second. And I think you guys remember me saying that these four soft keys around it, uh, they have some tricks of their own. I'm going to call these trick keys. And it's not just these four. There's actually two more, which we're going to get to after these. So let's go ahead and start off with the email key. So not only does this double as your menu key, this doubles as your recent app switcher for when you hold it when you're on the home screen it'll bring up the 3d window formation and you can use the d-pad to scroll through which windows you want to select and then you just go all the way down from where you want to click that icon on the bottom right to clear all the recent apps out of there or background apps i should say now let's go to the next one the camera key of course it's going to open up your camera but this is not your shutter key if you press that camera key and you're in camera mode, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna back you right out of it and you'll be back on the home screen. So this is actually your back button. And if you're on a browser and if you clicked on multiple links one by one, it'll take you back to the previous link and pretty much so on, so on. Now let's go down to the browser key. So the browser key that looks like the Earthlink logo, this is the cool part. What you're gonna do is if you hold that, it's gonna start your Google voice search so besides saying, OK, Google, you could save the trouble and just hold that key down. Now, let's go to the last key right here, which is the little star key. That's your favorite app key. And what that does is that when you tap on that star key, it'll open up any favorite app that you have already selected. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to select one of the apps that are already on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select YouTube because I like to go to YouTube a lot for streaming music, looking at videos, blah, 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 the whole shebang. And when I tap that, see, it opens YouTube right up and you can change it anytime you want to. All you gotta do is just hold the star key again and then choose another application that you wanna use. So I'll change it to Facebook and it'll open up Facebook just like that. See, perfect. Now, since we're back on the home screen, here's what I want to show you. There's two more trick keys, which you guys heard me say. And here's one of them right now, the clear key. So we're on the home screen. Now watch when I press this clear key, watch. It brings down my notification drawer. Now when I hit that again, it's gonna show everything. It'll show every one of my settings if I just tap on that. And you can use the D-pad to scroll through each one of them and to select them if you want. Now, let me go ahead and say this. The D-pad is not gonna be able to scroll through the notifications that you see showing in front of your faces. You'll have to use your fingers to scroll through the rest of them. And I have a lot of notifications as you can see. And that's a little bit disappointing to not be able to use the D-pad to scroll through my notifications, but that's okay. As long as the touch screen works, I won't have that much of a problem. Now for the last trick key, um, this is actually gonna go to another subject as well because I wanna talk about some virtual keypads this phone has and a very particular one too. So what I'm gonna do in order to show you is that I'm gonna go into my text messaging and I'm just gonna type a new message and one of these keyboards are showing up right now. So I'm gonna put out my notification bar and hit change keyboard. So um, yeah, this phone has a lot of pre-installed keyboards and one at the top is actually something I just installed, but I'm actually gonna take that off. So of course we have the Google keyboard, AKA Gboard. Then there's the Google Japanese input, which that actually looks like the numeric keypad for when the phone is open, but 
that doesn't work for it at all if you try to use the keypad itself. Then there's Google Voice typing. And then here's the one I'm using, which is Open WNN Japanese Input. So let's go ahead and go down to Type Text Message, and I'm going to hit OK. So as you can see at the bottom, there's the keypad itself. But since I have the phone open, it'll hide it. Of course, I can show it whenever I want to by hitting this little icon right here. Show keyboard, high keyboard, and I'm gonna hide it. Now here's the last trick key right here. Oh, by the way, before I show you what that is, the open WNN Japanese input, this is the only keyboard that you can use the physical keypad to do your old school text messaging. None of the other keyboards will work with this physical keypad. If you do, all you're gonna get is numbers and then it'll switch to another application when you don't want it to. Now here's the last trick key right here. Watch when I press the call key. This changes my different typing modes. So to Japanese, to English alphabetic, to numeric. And there's actually six modes. The one I'm on is on half width mode because if I'm on full width, it'll be a lot of spaces in between my words, which I don't want to have to deal with. So yeah, pretty much those are all the trick keys. All right, now let's talk about the camera. So we're dealing with the main eight megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. And then you have the two megapixel self portrait camera for that'll only work when the phone is open. Let me go ahead and throw that out. And as you can see, I'm in the camera application right now, just skimming around. And these are basic camera controls. You're not gonna get any fancy F-stop controllers like you see on some of the phones like the LG V10, V20, the G5, some of the Samsung phones, some of the other phones that you can use as a professional photography camera for when you uh, manually adjust your settings uh, adjust your lens and things of that sort. Um, you're not going to get it on this free time with Sashi since this is a mid range phone. Going back to the camera and my experience with it, um, the camera can be a hit or miss, which comes as no surprise since this is a mid range phone, as I said. But the 8 megapixel camera can take some really good pictures. It all depends on the environment you are in and if you have a good amount of light. So Take these pictures right here from when I was out on the town. I was at my mall of Columbia in the center and you can see the Dave and Busters. And I can't wait to go to Dave and Busters. I've always wanted to go to Dave and Busters. And you guys can see that this is a very clear shot when I held the phone very still. And it had plenty of light. So that leads me to this. This phone is not low light friendly. And um, if you need to use the LED flash, um, you can go ahead and use it but um, it can wash out some of the colors. Now, speaking of which, the colors aren't oversaturated in any way. It's normal, it's fine, but then again, it kind of looks like it could be a little bit um, bland, well, but not too bland, but just a little bland. So maybe it looks like uh, some of the pictures can come out looking boring in some kind of way, but um, it's only a little bit, so it's not that big of a deal. Now let's go to the two megapixel self-portrait uh, camera. That actually takes good pictures itself, but um, of course it's the same thing as the eight megapixel camera. That's pretty much all the things I said. And actually, let me go ahead and throw this in there. This is a surprise which I actually came across and found by accident. I'm not sure if Freetail meant to include this feature, but I can actually zoom in with the front camera. I can zoom in with the two megapixel camera. I just wanted to play around with it since we all know that we weren't able to use pinch to zoom on the front camera. But when I did it on this Freetail Musashi, I was in shock. So Freetail, I don't know if you guys meant to do that, but thank you for including that feature. Okay, so you guys have looked at some of the pictures that I have taken. Now let's take a look at some of the videos that I have shot with this phone. Hey everybody, it's me, Silent D, part of GWA, Game World Antics, and I am inside 
Pier 1 Imports Home Goods Store on Harbison Boulevard. And this is a bit of a test video that I'm doing on the Freetown Musashi. So I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but when we get back to the part of the review where we get back to more of the video, to more of the camera of this cell phone, I'll give you um, full details of what I think about it and what I noticed as I do a bit of a playback on my regular computer and then edit it in. So far, I cannot complain about this phone. For an eight megapixel camera, this thing, so far so good, it looks very, very sharp. It really does, and it's just, I'm just in awe of it. Nothing's saturated, everything's the right color, it's the right amount of warmth. Of course, there are manual settings that I can use to do exposure and things of that sort, but, but I can't really complain at all. This is only the interior, so I'll do more of this phone when I go outside. So yes, it's me, Silent D, back here again. This time I am at Harbison Boulevard Park. Of course, the lake. I know I gotta be there so I can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Especially with this review of the free tail. Oop, let me watch out because I'm, I'm about to walk to this light pole. So, look at this so far. Oh, sorry about that. That was a notification coming. Not sure what that was. Let me see. Oh, of course, that was saying that I had some Wi-Fi networks coming in. But, um, so far so good. The video looks nice and clean. It's a bit of, well, we are in kind of a bit of low light, but um, this is kind of afternoon. Let me see this. Oh, hey, look down there. So much for all the other birds flying south of the winter. <laughs> look at them, look at the little dust. They are just chilling. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a little bit blurry since this is a bit of a mid-range phone and not the high-tech specs. So look at them, they're just chilling and chilling. So anyway, let's do a little bit of a walk around. Well, not too much, cause it's gonna take forever. Ooh, one of them does it for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then there's one flying overhead. So yeah, already a minute since I barely even walked over at Harbison Park and yeah I am loving this little phone so far but I'm gonna do an oh sorry I cannot even get my words out this is my first time doing a major review for our network so it's gonna take me a minute to get my words out but yeah like I said I'm loving this little snappy little nostalgic Android phone Frita Musashi Frita Musashi I recommend it to anybody for um one of the peoples who are pretty much in the middle a power user yet not a power user at the same time but yeah i'm gonna do a bit of walking around take some pictures of the park see y'all later okay it's me silent d again and let me go ahead and tell you about the video aspects so when i record in video mode i feel like that there's some unnecessary changes that it does i'm not sure what it would do but um it would seem it would go to less quality than it does when it's in picture mode so picture mode everything can come out fine or a mess but video can be just a mess as well i mean the video looks decent but i feel like something just happens with it i'm not sure why but i just got that strange feeling but overall the sound comes out um clearly there's no artifacts in the overall um, recording of the video itself except for when you zoom in not just video but um, picture mode as well if you zoom in you will see a lot of noise and some pixelation and I'm gonna remind you guys um, resolution goes up to 480p which let me go ahead and go back to browsing in YouTube for a second so here's where I'm going with this so it's not just video playback that's up to 480p on the phone itself but when I take videos from it it also applies to any streaming that you do that's YouTube that's Netflix that's anything that you usually look at stuff in 1080p you won't be able to do on this phone since it's going up to 480p <laughs> Alright, so now we come to the part where I give an official rating 
of my overall experience with the Frita Musashi and what I'm going to use to have the out of five system would be the GWA Game World Antic logos. Question is, what will I rate the Frita Musashi? Well, based on some of the pros and cons that we just went over, I'm gonna give this phone a solid three out of five. Like I said before, I like the phone a lot. I miss having that nostalgic feel, but um, it is just watered down because of some of the uh, features it possesses, like the resolution, the processor, the onboard storage, uh, things of that sort. But it's a nice snappy little phone. It gets the job done, but it's just a little too limited. But yeah, like I said, I like the overall phone a lot. Okay, you guys, so real quick, I have to recant something that I said earlier in this review, and that was when I said that I wasn't able to get 4G LTE on this phone, but turns out I was able to, but that only happened when I went to Atlanta, Georgia a couple of weeks ago. The reason why I was in Atlanta was because someone invited me to a networking event, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll be able to network with some people, hopefully work on some future projects with them, and so on. So when I arrived in Atlanta on the first day, that's what I noticed in my notification bar that it said 4G. And I actually was very surprised and excited at the same time that I was getting 4G because I thought I wasn't able to because of what I thought um, the radio in this phone couldn't support our network bands for cellular phones in the US like it did in Japan since I thought because they have different frequencies for 4G LTE as we do ourselves, um, it wasn't gonna happen. but. It happened when I went to Atlanta, and since I was there, I decided to run the speed test app, and I did three tests, and I have some screenshots from them. So, you're gonna be looking at the first test from the left all the way to the right, which is the third test. And as you can see, the first and the third test had great results of 4G LTE. And the second test, I'm not sure what that was, probably because I had half of 4G coverage, but then again, between that and the first test, they both had half of 4G LTE coverage, but the third test was the one that did exponentially well. Now, I'm not sure why I had 4G down there in Atlanta, Georgia, and not right here in Columbia, South Carolina, which is where I live at. Some of you may know this better than I do. Um, if you know what I'm talking about and if you know why it's like this, why I can get 4G in one place but not in my place, um, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and pretty much correct me if I'm wrong on some of the things I say. I welcome any opinions, and yeah, that's it. All right, you guys, we are at the end of this video, and I hope each and every one of you enjoyed this review just as much as I enjoyed reviewing this bad boy to y'all. When I tell y'all I have the nostalgic feeling all over again with this Frita Musashi, I'm not gonna lie, I love this little phone, I'm glad I bought it for $182 off of eBay uh, and not for retail directly. But either way, I was still gonna get this. So it wasn't gonna matter. And um, Freetail, if you are watching this video, I wanna say thank you guys for making this product. Thank you and I enjoyed using it. Despite some of the flaws it does have, um, it's, it's cool. I mean, I like this phone a lot. I really do. But um, hopefully you guys watch this video and do take some of the suggestions that I pointed out. And maybe you guys can probably make another Free Time Musashi, Free Time Musashi 2, something along that line, I don't know. But yeah, if you guys are going to make another Free Time Musashi, I'm down for it. I'm down. I will get that in a heartbeat. But um, yeah, you guys. Um, we're at the end of this video um, Hit thumbs up if you do like it um, Keep a lookout for more content from us that we're gonna post on this YouTube channel which you guys are watching it from Our Facebook page GWA Game World Antics and our main Facebook page The Spawning Point Keep a lookout for us posting more content that we have to come and share with you guys. All right, and um well, what I'm not going to share is my free time Musashi because I'm going to go ahead and end this video and 
enjoy this some more, okay? So, um, I'll see you guys in the next go round. Bye-bye.